What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn Brian Frizzell, coming to you today from the Lincoln Economic Building, the new home of Cascade Media in the 18th and Vine District area, Kansas City, Missouri. My very special guest today is Mr. Sidney King, Regional Director, Regional President, Regional President of Liberty Bank, Kansas City, Kansas. Welcome, Mr. King. Well, thank you for having me. Tell our viewers a little bit about yourself. Well, again, my name is Sidney King. I am the Regional President for Liberty Bank's Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri operations. I've been with the company now for about five and a half years. Liberty has been in this market for about six years. Liberty is a 40-year-old financial institution that was created to serve the historically underserved African-American community. We're experts in that business and uh, providing that support. We have expanded our footprint from New Orleans to Baton Rouge to Jackson, Mississippi, Houston, Texas, Chicago, Illinois, Kansas City, Missouri, Kansas City, Kansas, and Detroit, Michigan, and soon to open in a new location. We, are, we will be eventually the first billion dollar black owned bank in America, growing institution, well run, well managed, well capitalized. Let's talk a little bit about economic inequalities. Uh, Mr. King, a couple of days ago we had Economic Development Corporation President, Mr. Pete Fullerton, mm -hmm. and we discussed the issue of economic inequality. According to recent data by the Pew Research Center, the typical black household has about $5,600 in wealth, assets minus debts, compared to the typical white household, which has about $113,000 in wealth. This 20 to 1 wealth gap is even more striking during periods of economic downturns. Uh, Mr. King, we know that economic inequalities disproportionately affect African Americans. Mm -hmm. Christmas is coming up and it's always hard for some to manage mm -hmm. their cash. Do you have any tips uh, to where we can successfully manage our cash during the holiday crunch? Well, I will tell you, you know, your comments there about uh, the, uh, the disproportionate economic situation of the African American community is, is very true and it's very disturbing. We have got to find ways to own the businesses as opposed to work for, for the businesses. Become that entrepreneur. Seek entrepreneurship where you, you create job producing businesses for others in your community. Um, I, I blame a lot of it on Willie Lynch. You know, that curse that he put on our people years ago is still prevalent today and we've got to work toward correcting that. You know, for an example, I'm working with Liberty Bank and Trust. Liberty Bank is the second largest black owned bank in America. The largest black owned bank in America today is $680 million. The largest Hispanic American bank is $11 billion. The largest Asian American bank is $10.5 billion. And there's several billion dollar banks in between. There's not one black owned billion dollar bank in America today. That kind of tells you the, the disparity between the wealth uh, within the other communities and the lack of wealth in our community. We've got to find ways to support each other, to provide uh, support in the businesses that we own in our communities and develop more businesses within our community so that we can grow that wealth. Um, your question was about managing your funds in the holiday season. The first thing that I would say is don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Don't go out and overspend on Christmas shopping, buying all the toys and gifts. You know, the old saying it is better to give than to receive. It is better to give when you can afford it, not just give to keep up with the Joneses, to keep up with something that someone else. Um, when we go out shopping for our children for Christmas, we tend to overspend. We tend to buy things that we really can't afford because we want them to have a great Christmas. We want them to have a memorable Christmas. Christmas morning, they come in, they're excited, they open up the boxes, they take those toys and put them away, have more fun playing with the boxes. And those toys that we have spent all of this money for go back into a closet never to be used again. We've got to be more strategic in our shopping, buying things that are beneficial. And I would say for the younger kids, buying things that are educational. You know, because we've got to find ways to keep up on the educational side for our children so that they can become those better job producing business owners of the future. You know, so there are a lot of things that we need to do, but just don't overspend for Christmas. Manage your funds, budget your funds. You know, because what happens after Christmas when those bills come in, you know, we can't wait on those tax refunds because even now the government is pushing the tax, date, tax dates back. So it'll take even longer to get those tax refunds. Excellent. Give when you can afford it. Find creative ways to give in areas such as education where it will truly benefit us. Uh, Mr. King, last year there was this article online at the Fiscal Times entitled, 
millennials, young, broke, and spending on luxury. Millennials represent the fastest growing segment of luxury good and service purchasers. Mm -hmm. Most millennials are burdened with student loans and many are unemployed. How do we take facts from this article and still encourage young professionals to make smart saving and investment decisions mm -hmm. that will really affect us in the long term? Mm -hmm. You know, that's a great point because we have a society that has gotten to the point of get it now. You know, there is no delayed gratification. We've got to get back to the point of delayed gratification knowing that we put the time and effort in, we put the work in and save and plan for those luxury expenditures as opposed to having to have it now, again, trying to keep up with the Joneses, keeping up with someone else. You know, like you mentioned, a lot of, a lot of our youth today are coming back just overburdened with student loans. Uh, it's amazing, you know, how much debt some of these people come out with coming out of school, you know, because this is expensive. But we've got to find ways to, you know, to even before that look into these grants. There are so many grants and uh, scholarships for the African American community primarily that go unclaimed. We need to research those things. We need to follow up and find ways to get some of those funds because there is money available. There's really no excuse today for an African American that is well educated, that is knowledgeable to go to college because the, fundings is, the funding is there, the funds are available. But go out and research those scholarships. I mean, back in my day, we had to do things called looking up encyclopedias. You got Google and, and Bing. You Mr. King, uh, we kind of got in the way a little bit from the story of Liberty Bank. I believe uh, you, a while back you acquired the assets of Douglas Bank, which was a black-owned bank in Kansas City, Kansas. Let's rewind a little bit and have you tell us the story about Liberty Bank. Okay. As I mentioned, Liberty started in the New Orleans area. We've expanded to seven, eight different markets now. We came into Kansas City through the acquisition of the old Douglas Bank. Douglas did a lot of great things in the community, but one of the challenges as many black businesses faced, they were undercapitalized. Being undercapitalized, meaning in banking, there's limited things that you can do, and they grew a little too fast uh, for the capital base that they had and eventually succumbed uh, to that. And Liberty was able to come in and make the acquisition. One of the reasons we came in is to keep the franchise African American because it's important. There is a benefit of having an Af African American financial institution in your community a bank that understands the uniqueness of our community and makes decisions based on credit, not based on who you know. Uh, in, in many instances, we have difficulty as people getting financing from the larger institutions because they come in and they've already labeled us walking in the door. Uh, they say there's no more redlining with the CRA, but there's redlining still existing in uh, the perceptions that have people, when they, people have when you walk in the door. Liberty Bank does not have that issue. When you come in the door, we're going to look for a way to find a way to make your loan work. I mean, we're, we're not always successful, let me say that, but we're going to take the time to sit down with you to see what your situation is, to see if there are opportunities or other ways that we can make it happen, creative ways that we can make it happen because of the flexibility that we have as an institution, knowing the uniqueness of the community that we're here to serve, that we were created to serve. Now, let me say, we're our bank for all people. Okay. We're a bank for all people but with a focus and a mission to serve that historically underserved African-American community. Is Liberty Bank the only African-American bank in Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri? Yes, we are the only minority African-American-owned institution in both states, Kansas and Missouri. Starting in New Orleans in 1972, I read somewhere recently um, during Hurricane Katrina that your bank's headquarters suffered mm -hmm. um, and had to rebuild. Can you talk a little bit about that? You know, it's, a, it's interesting. When Katrina came through Alabama, I'm sorry, through New Orleans, I was, in, the South, yeah, I was actually in Alabama at the time, and let me just make a statement. I was president of a bank in Mobile, Alabama. When I came to Mobile, Alabama, knowing that we were coming to the Gulf Coast where there were historically hurricanes, I called Alden McDonald, the president of Liberty Bank, and asked him for his inclement weather policy. When Katrina came through, the South, Alabama was in 100 mile an hour wind. Downtown Mobile was flooded. Mm. We were underwater. But the bank that I was with, we opened a branch at 9.15 the day after Katrina came through because we put a plan of action in place that Mr. McDonald from Liberty Bank had provided us, using a generator and other things, uh, strategically locating people after the storm. So we were the only bank in Mobile that opened up the day after the storm. This plan would have worked well in New Orleans had the flood water not come, because there is really no plan of action that you can put in place for flooding. 
Uh, Liberty had eight of its ten branches underwater after Katrina, including its corporate headquarters. Wow. That building was a story and a half underwater, sitting right next door to the bus barn in New Orleans, the bus barn that was full of buses that were underwater that should have been transporting people out, but that's a different story. But after the storm, Mr. McDonald had a historic classic decision, or made a historic and classic decision. If you had a Liberty Bank account, whether you had money in it or not, you were able to go to an ATM machine and pull out $500. His theory was money first, questions later. And the bank lost severely in that year, but through the grace of God and through those efforts and the rewards that came after, they had record production the next year. But at that point, the expansion started. We then started to look at different markets where we have expanded to the seven different markets that we've expanded to. Again, primarily focusing on rebuilding the historically underserved African American communities. You mentioned historically underserved African American communities. Uh, Mr. King, talk a little bit about the importance of having a black owned bank in the Kansas City, Kansas area, and the challenges that come with keeping such a bank open and thriving. Yeah, now that's a great question. <laughs> Now, the importance, again, as I mentioned before, is we understand the uniqueness of the community that we were created to serve. I mean, when you go into the different larger institutions, they don't necessarily understand you, and as I mentioned, they label you when you walk in the door. You're already preconceived, uh, with pre preconceived perceptions walking in the door, that you, you know, are the kind of person that they see on television. You know, they've labeled you and they've made those decisions. When you come into Liberty, you're one of us. You're one of the family. We're just looking to see what we can do to make the transaction work, to make the deal work. You know, the misconception that many people have is that we are the bank of last resort. We are the bank that you go to when no one else will lend you money. That's not necessarily the case. We make decisions differently than what some of the other banks make. We are the opportunity that many people will have, but we are a bank that is federally insured with several fiduciary responsibilities to our shareholders, to our customers, and, and more importantly, to the regulators, to the government. Yeah. Three more questions. I want to know, as a banker, you're sitting there, I don't know if you have an office window or not. I, I know when I was at Howard University, you have the office window and the banker would be able to see walk, see the people as they walk by on the street there. Mm -hmm. You're watching a lot, you see a lot going on in your role as banker. What challenges do you see going on there in the Kansas City, Kansas community? Well, you know, some of the challenges, again, are economics. We talked about, about the, uh, the, the disparity between ownership, what people have and what people need, uh, what the majority community has. You know, we've got to find ways to, to bring that re economic opportunities, economic revenues back into our communities. Because as you mentioned earlier, our homes are less value because we live in areas that don't have the great value and the great appreciation. We don't have the disposable income. Uh, we don't invest. Uh, in a lot of the markets that, that can generate greater revenue for us. We don't have the resources to build our businesses. You know, we've got to find ways to work together to support each other. Uh, I tell you, Earl Graves Jr. came to Mobile one time and he, made a, he asked us a question. How many of you can look at your service providers and say that you have 10 black service providers? Of African Americans, how many of you can say you have 10 black service providers? Your accountants, your lawyers, uh, your doctors, your pharmacists, of course your banks. Uh, the one that we can almost all say is our church. We all go to predominantly black owned churches, but typically on Sunday morning, that, well Monday morning is the greatest wealth transfer that takes place when the churches take all the money that you have deposited in them and put it into the larger institutions who really have no interest in your communities. So we've got to work together to find ways to grow our communities and again, it gets back to working together, supporting each other, supporting our businesses, and not just looking for the excuses to say, if it's white, it's right, if it's black, get back. You know, we've got to start focusing and make it a habit to work together, not just because it's a black business. It's got to be a business that is worthy of your service. You know, for example, you know, I went to college. I graduated from DePaul University. You know, when I went to school, I started after school, I worked in public accounting. I had to work twice as hard to get ahead as my white counterparts. They came in when it was time for promotions or time for uh, moving to the next grade. They were automatically promoted. I had to be tested. If I had not been prepared, I would not have gotten promoted. So you've got to take that time and effort and be prepared. 
when you're sitting in an office environment and everybody is chit-chatting and Googling and surfing the net, you got to have your head down working. We've got to make sure that we have that extra advantage because when opportunity presents itself, we've got to be prepared. We can't wait and say that you know the opportunity is coming to us. We've got to be prepared before the opportunity presents itself so that when it's there, we can move forward with it because we don't get the opportunities that the larger community gets. They get the opportunity to move ahead. We've got to be prepared for it. So we've got to prepare ourselves for the future, prepare ourselves, get educated, uh, so that we can be prepared when that door opens, when opportunity knocks. Mr. King, those are really tools of the trade, valuable information that you're sharing here with us. Uh, you're really just taking the stereotype that I personally had of uh, the sophisticated banker and gone a little bit more and presented a sophisticated, educated banker mm -hmm. who's just not interested in getting your money, but interested in teaching you how to use that money so that it will produce generational wealth. Mm -hmm. um, what challenges are you looking forward to in the new in, in the new year, Mr. King? Well, you know, I'm looking for I'm looking for great opportunities for the future. I'm expecting to see Liberty Bank in the Kansas City region grow and continue to serve the needs of the community. I'm looking for our lending portfolio to expand so that we can put opportunities and put new developments within the inner city community, within the urban core, so that we can see the community grow. You know, I always look at the, the statement that people talk about rebuilding Wall Street. I think we need to rebuild America from the side streets. By putting good homeowners on the side streets of America, you bring businesses back to the main streets that roll through those side streets, job producing businesses that eventually make the goods and services that they order from the manufacturers that rebuilds Wall Street. So rebuilding it bottom up as opposed to top down. You know, when the government was putting that tarp money out, they was what I call sprinkling sugar on the top, it never made it to the side streets. We got to rebuild from the side streets to grow our community. And where do you see the power of media in being able to help usher that growth area, those growth areas in? Well, again, you know, using media, that's where the communication lines are, are coming from. You know, word of mouth advertising is great. It's one of the best forms and one of the most least expensive forms of advertising. But media gets to more people faster. And when you share that, that information with the media or through the media, you get that information, it expands faster, and it also reinforces uh, some of the things that are said. Like I think advertising uh, from the standpoint it's the best way to and one of the best forms of growing your business. We tend to find out when things get tough in the black community, when things get tough we tend to feel advertising is one of the things that we can avoid and not do. We need to do it even more because why do you think Coke and Pepsi are always advertising? They know that by advertising they get that market share. When you don't advertise you lose the opportunities and then and you really lose the reinforcement of the opportunities. Well, wow, you're really just educating us here. I'm going to have to call you Professor King. We uh, want you to come back and visit us. Give our viewers your address so that okay. they'll be able to get in touch with you and know where Douglas, uh, excuse me, where Liberty Bank is. Okay. Uh, you can reach us. One, I'd say check us out online at www.libertybank.net. That's libertybank.net. See a little bit about what we are and who we are and where we are. Uh, in the Kansas City market, we're at uh, what's it, 1314 North 5th Street in the KCK side and 1670 East 63rd Street on the Kansas City, Missouri side. You know, so give us a call, 913-321-7200. Uh, give us a call or visit us on the website, Liberty Bank and Trust. And my producer here is making a note for me to mention, we bank with Liberty. Cascade Media Group is one of your clients. Well, thank Mr. You. Sidney King, we'd like to thank you for coming and sharing with us today. If I could just add one comment. You know, just so that you know, everyone who's anyone banks at Liberty. You have a choice when it comes to banking. You're at Liberty to bank wherever you choose. We just want you to choose Liberty Bank and Trust. Of course, at your Liberty. Awesome. I'm Glenn Brian Frizzell, your host for What's Up Kansas City here today, urging you to aim high. The sky is the limit. Shoot for the moon. If you miss, at the very least, you land among the stars. Until next time, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. CMG wants you to always remember the victory we call success goes to the best prepared. When you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself. Thanks.